Hello and welcome to this clip uh, looking at mole ratios in acid-base titrations. It's designed to assist with understanding how the number of available protons in an acid affects the amount of alkali, in other words the moles of OH- ions, required to neutralise it in a titration. So neutralizing, neutralization can be represented by a definition, which is an acid and a base reacting together to form a salt, and it can also be um, broken down into a simple ionic equation. So you can see H plus and OH minus reacting to make H2O. So this ionic equation would represent an acid and an alkali. So if your base is a carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate, you employ a slightly different ionic equation. So ammonia is a slightly different base in the sense that it reacts with water to accept a proton, just like any other base would, uh, but it produces NH4 plus and OH minus, both in aqueous solution. And by doing this, it produces an alkali called ammonium hydroxide, or NH4OH. So for the purposes of this clip, let's just stick to a straightforward acid and alkali reaction that we mentioned a couple of minutes ago and think about how this applies to titrations. But to do this, we need to think about acids themselves, because, like you can see, the whole point of the clip that I've said at the top of the page is the number of available protons in an acid. So protons, as you know, are the same as hydrogen ions, so any acid can either be monobasic, dibasic, or tribasic. So let's start with the monobasic acids, that means a maximum of one proton per acid molecule can be released. So, if we do the um, dissociation for those acids, you can see that one hydrogen is released. So looking at the other acids, you can see that there's a maximum of two protons being released, or a maximum of three proton protons being released, which leads to them being called dibasic or tribasic. So you'll notice I haven't put the equations for the dissociation for the dibasic and tribasic acids because they don't all release their protons simultaneously. So you don't suddenly get 3 H pluses immediately coming into solution. It actually happens in stages. So each proton is released by a slightly different equation. Now this part of it um, comes in uh, A2 in the second year of the A-level course. So because this is a clip for first years, um, I'm not going to go into it at this particular point. If you want to look at um, more advanced clips for second year work, um, you can go to my channel and go to the second year playlist. So, coming back to titrations. So if we take three acids and we're going to titrate them in three separate titrations, because what we want to do is identify which one is which. So here's the problem. You have three acids, A, B, and C. You know that each will be one of the three on the left. How can you use a titration to tell which is which? So what you do is you use a standard solution of sodium hydroxide. So if you put a standard solution of NaOH in your conical flask, you can then determine which acid you have depending on the amount of acid required to neutralize it. So how do you do this? So the first thing to notice is that H plus and OH minus in a neutralization react in a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So NaOH releases one mole of OH minus per mole of NaOH. So you can see that from the dissociation equation we've just put up on the screen. So if we apply this to our acids, HCl will require an equal number of moles of OH minus to neutralize it. Being dibasic, sulfuric acid requires twice as much OH- to neutralise it. And therefore, phosphoric acid, being tribasic, requires three times as much OH- to neutralise it. So what does this mean in, the, in terms of the amount of acid that's actually required, that's used up? So in the case of HCl, you've got an equal amount of acid used as alkali. So with sulfuric acid, only half the number of moles of acid, that is H2SO4, as alkali, are needed. 
And in the case of H3PO4, only a third the number of moles of acid as alkali are required. Let's try and do an equation now to illustrate each of these. So we've got our equations here. You can see quite clearly that if you were to do the ionic equation um, for each of them, you'd essentially end up with the neutralization ionic equation which I've left in the middle of the screen. So when this applies to a titration, you have to think quite carefully about what is in the burette and what is in the titration flask. So if you stick to the same amount of alkali each time, the more the protons there are in an acid, the less the amount of acid you'll actually need to neutralize that same amount of alkali each time you do it. So what you do is you just check how much acid you need to neutralize a standard set amount of alkali. And what will happen is the more protons in the acid, the less um, acid in your burette you'll need in order to reach the um, end point of your titration. Okay, so hopefully this has been a fairly useful introduction to this technique. Uh, if it's been played in class and you're doing it um, as a practical, hopefully it now gives you an idea of what to think about when you get on with it. Okay, so thanks for listening and see you soon.